Hair loss of any kind is stressful. It can take a toll on you mentally, physically, on anyone that it happens to. But how can you tell the difference between if it's genetic or if it's just your natural shedding? Because the symptoms can appear similar at first, mainly you're losing hair. But at a closer look, they're actually really different and they require different solutions. Let's get into it. Oh, yeah. What's up guys, Trav White here. Welcome back to the channel where we talk all about the science of style and grooming. A really quick disclaimer for this video. This is not medical advice in any way. I'm not diagnosing anyone or recommending any medication for anyone. I'm not a doctor. This is for educational purposes only. So any choices that you make to try over-the-counter remedies to self-diagnose or ingest anything, 100% your choice and your liability. My advice is always to talk to your doctor. Basically what I'm trying to say is don't sue me and please subscribe to my channel. <laughs> Having said that, what's the difference between telogen effluvium and androgenetic alopecia aka male pattern baldness. And FYI, moving forward, I'm just gonna refer to telogen effluvium as TE and male pattern baldness as AGA because they can be quite a mouthful to say over and over and over and over again. So before we get into like the main differences, I wanna go over some pre pre bleh. I wanna go over some prerequisites, just some things to know that'll make the differences make sense later. So a little context before getting into the good stuff. Some prerequisites that are important to know moving forward is number one, hair growth happens in a cycle. The antigen, catagen, and telogen phases, three cycles. Antigen is the phase of growth. It can last anywhere from two to seven years, depending on your genetics. Basically in this cycle, blood is carrying nutrients to the hair's dermal papilla and your hair is growing. And then catagen is when the blood flow stops, your hair stops growing. This can last three to four months. And telogen is when the natural shedding of that hair occurs. So the antigen phase kicks up again a few months later. So if you notice your hair falling out of your head and you see a little white bulb at the end, that is a telogen shed hair. That bulb is called the root sheath and it connects to the hair's papilla when in the antigen phase to help receive the nutrients. So when nutrients cease, AKA telogen, that root sheath disconnects from that papilla and it sheds and that's how you know it's a telogen shed hair. If you don't see that sheath, that little white bulb, but you do see like hair coming out, chances are it's probably breakage from damage or dry hair or something brushing too hard and not from shedding. Okay, so that's one important thing to know moving forward. The next important thing to know is how much hair shedding per day is normal. So we shed on average 50 to 100 hairs per day. It differs from person to person. Could be a little more, could be a little less. But personally, I fall into that range. I have a video where I counted all of the hairs that I shed after washing, conditioning, and brushing. I actually saved all of that hair and counted it and it came out to 68 hairs. So go check that video out if you like, I'll link to it in the description. But if you're not shedding above 100 plus, 150, 200 hairs a day, chances are you don't have telogen effluvium, TE. Now, androgenetic alopecia is another story. I'll get into that in a second. But another thing I would add is that it's hard to estimate how much hair you shed by just looking at it. When I saved that huge ball of hair and tried to guess how much I shed, I was like, oh wow, this is like 150 hairs. It was only 68. So the only real way to know is to let it dry and then like count each hair. Or you can just watch my video and kind of take comfort knowing that if you're shedding about the same as me, is probably the normal amount. Third, the third thing to know before moving forward is the difference between a vellus hair and a terminal hair. Vellus hairs are three centimeters or less. They're lightly pigmented. They're commonly referred to as peach fuzz. Think a young boy going through puberty trying to grow a beard. He's got peach fuzz all over his hair. Terminal hairs, they're coarser, longer, pretty much your scalp hair, your full beard hair, or any hair on your body that's not peach fuzz. And this is really important to know a little bit later in this video, so remember that. Okay, let's get into the differences between TE and AGA. So what causes TE? This can probably be an entire video on its own because there are so many factors that could play a role. It could be things like too much stress, food sensitivities, a poor diet, medication side effects, viruses and inflammation in the body, 
lack of sleep. It could be one or all or a totally different factor. So it's important to note that telogen effluvium tends to happen kind of all at once, right? So if it's a sudden onset, this is because there's about a three month lag between some event that happened in your life and the hair is moving from catagen into telogen phase. So if you notice excess shedding now, it could be the result of something that happened or started three to four months prior, right? Whereas AGA happens more slowly and over time. But here's the good news. For TE, you probably, I'm not, I'm not gonna speak in absolutes here, but you probably will not go fully bald and it can be easily reversible once you identify the cause. So some symptoms you might notice with TE. Obviously, excessive shedding per day, sometimes upwards of 200, 300 hairs. You'll probably notice thinning, most noticeably on the top of the scalp, whereas with AGA, you'll notice primarily on receding hairlines or thinning on your crown. So a 2019 paper titled Telogen Effluvium, a Comprehensive Review, which was written in the Clinical Cosmetic and Investigational Dermatology Journal, noted that another common side effect of TE is called trichotnia. And this is sort of like a painful sensation in the scalp. But the paper does go on to say that it's kind of unsure how frequent that it needs to be to be considered TE and how diagnostic this symptom is. They've just kind of noticed a correlation of people who have TE also experience sort of a painful sensation of the scalp. But your most common symptom is definitely gonna be like a sudden onset of excess shedding. The biggest difference between AGA and TE is that TE is excessive shedding of hair due to some external factor that might have happened. And in AGA, is the miniaturization of your hair follicle. And this is due to how it reacts to dihydrotestosterone or DHT. And men genetically predisposed to have a sensitivity to that hormone. So the follicle miniaturization happens, that follicle shuts down, stops growing hair. And it doesn't do this by excessive shedding. In fact, AGA shedding is commonly between 10 to 100 hairs per day, which is much less intelligent effluvium. So additionally, the physical hairs lost from AGA are minuscule, like centimeters in size. So you remember the prerequisite, the vellus hairs versus terminal hairs. So hairs that are three centimeters or shorter, that peach fuzz, the vellus hairs are more commonly associated with AGA shedding. So if you're shedding full length hairs, chances are it's not pattern baldness. In fact, to back up this point, there's a 2005 paper from the JAMA Dermatology Journal that studied 100 patients to distinguish between TE and pattern baldness. So the results were that patients who shed less than 100 hairs and 10% or more of those hairs were vellus hairs were considered to have AGA. And patients who shed over 100 hairs per day and 10% or more of those were terminal hairs, they were considered to have telogen effluvium. So it's also important to note that those who shed less than 100 hairs per day and over 10% were terminal hairs were considered to have telogen effluvium in remission. So they were sort of reversing their telogen effluvium and getting back into that normal hair growth cycle. In layman's terms, if the majority of the shedding you see is hairs longer than three centimeters, chances are it's not a AGA. And if you fall into the, I'm shedding 100 hairs or less per day, you probably don't have TE either. It's just normal shedding. Telogen effluvium will also not likely follow the common pattern you see from male pattern baldness. So miniaturization of the follicle from AGA typically follows a very identifiable pattern. And this is most notably illustrated on the Norwood scale. You, you'll see a scale commonly from Norwood two through seven, and most trichologists or dermatologists will diagnose pattern baldness kind of around a Norwood three. And you'll notice the recession first on your temples, or the crown of your head, and more extreme recessions define where on that Norwood scale you'll fall. So telogen effluvium can happen kind of anywhere. It doesn't really follow the same pattern every time. You'll probably just notice thinning on your scalp. Now that you know sort of what the differences are, what can you do to solve each one? So the best thing to do for TE is to try and identify the cause. So try to think back like three months prior 
and try to discover like, did something change in your life? Did a stressful event happen? Did you get on a new medication? Did you drastically change your diet? Did you introduce new supplements? Did you remove supplements? Did, did you get sick? You know, like once you can pinpoint why you might be shedding excessively, you can try and reverse the cause. Maybe just go on vacation and relax. I've also read a recent 2019 study in the Phytotherapy Research Journal that pea sprout extract, this is known as Pisum sativum L, can help shorten that telogen phase and kickstart the antigen phase back up again. So it does this through a protein called Nagen. No, not the slang for your head, although it's derived from this protein, that slang is, but it's a protein that shortens the hair's telogen phase. Additionally, pea sprout triggers FGF7, which stands for fibroblast growth factor seven. And this kickstarts the growth of the keratinocytes to begin the antigen phase again. So uh, this study showed pretty promising results, about 100 milligrams supplemented daily for two months shows a 37% reduction of shedding after two months. Now the solution is not for pattern baldness or AGA, but it's possibly something to look into for hair shedding. But remember guys, I'm not telling you to buy or ingest anything. I'm simply sharing research and education. So whatever you put in your body, you're responsible for. Now when it comes to AGA solutions, the only thing that I can really tell you is talk to your doctor. They might look into things like minoxidil, finasteride, dutasteride, PRP, you know, low light therapy, they, they could look at a ton of different solutions for use, even up to getting surgery. I will say, if you wanna learn about any of those treatments, I just published an article in my men's hair and grooming app, Maynard Mains, about three cutting edge treatments for genetic hair loss, which was not written by me, it was written by an MD, a dermatologist. So if you wanna go download the Maynard Mains app in the app store and check out that article, it'll go into a lot more detail about each of those. You'll also find an amazing community of men in there who are super passionate about hair care and beard care as well. I know hair fall can be stressful, but you know, try to relax, try to do what you can to identify the cause, and hopefully you'll get to a solution. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.